Hi, my name is Stefan Krivokapic. I'm the founder of Scrivo, which is a Milan-based industrial design consultancy. Uh, our studio mainly designs furniture, lighting and household objects for various companies around Europe. Our projects in general start out from a material or a technology to arrive to the final product. This can be through usually a long research of a specific material or it can be through the input of a company to arrive to an interesting solution. We do not believe in designing based purely on shape. Uh, we strongly believe as a studio that the material will decide the shape or the technology will decide the shape to then be able to manipulate that to something that we want to achieve. A couple of years ago we got into contact with Maniforms, which is a furniture manufacturer located just about 20 kilometers outside of Venice, Italy. Um, they work primarily f uh, in contract and residential markets, ranging from everything from uh, domestic location, so let's say a home, all the way up to hotels, restaurants uh, and public spaces. I wanted to get into contact with them because I found the products that they were manufacturing to be quite interesting and the technologies that they were using to be interesting as well. Uh, and specifically, uh, I liked the idea that they had very contemporary designs, but they also worked very hands-on, so maintaining the uh, traditional and Italian handicraft as well. So we got into contact with them and I was actually interested to talk to them about this idea that I had about working with uh, steam bent wood and with uh, caning as well. So with rattan and with the steam bent wood to come to an innovative product that hadn't been seen on the market yet. So the colony armchair was presented to, to many forms and they, and they liked the concept and together we worked to improve it and to come to something that could really be an interesting product for the market. And so the chair, as the armchair is, is actually quite a complex product. Um, it has very high levels of uh, technology, th technologies that did not exist even, let's say, 10 years ago. Uh, and working together, we managed to find a solution that would really fit in uh, various markets quite well. And it was important that it wasn't just for one type of location, just let's say a home or for an office or a hotel, but somewhere, a type of product that could fit in very nicely into different markets as well. Um, the Colony Armchair has a structure that is made of steam bent beech wood uh, that has been then covered in rattan caning and then accessorized uh, with steel bent legs. Uh, and then finally, as an option, there is also an option, to, there are cushions uh, for the seat and also for the backrest available in different materials and different colors. What many forums found interesting about this product was that um, normally when you see caned furniture, so with rattan, it's usually always on a flat surface, it's very two-dimensional. And what we wanted to do was for the user to sit inside the chair, because it's one of the few products on the market and I'm talking about any type of product ranging from a smartphone all the way to a bottle of water. It's one of the few types of products, an armchair, that you're completely inside of the product. You're surrounded by the product. And we wanted the cane, the, the rattan, to actually be completely surround the user. So that even though if I'm sitting in a chair, and usually when you're sat in a chair, you're looking forward, you're not looking downwards. So you, not looking into the actual object, but it wanted to be part of the product so that when I hold it or I, I can feel it, I can feel all the parts of the actual chair, I can feel the texture of the cane surface that has surrounded me, ranging from below all the way around to me. So we really try to work on this idea that it's not flat and that it becomes three-dimensional because we love the idea of caning as a material because it's very sustainable compared to other options on the market. It's very natural, it can be worked in very many different ways, it has a certain level of flexibility, but it can also be relatively rigid when placed inside of a frame of wood as well. 
Um, so we came up with this idea. Originally, uh, we came up with different ideas that it could be in different woods, it could be in different colors. As you can see here, I'm sitting in, in the painted version, but it's also available in different finishes of wood, both natural as well, ranging from beech wood to walnut and so on. So there's many different options. Also, the legs come in a lot of different options of legs. We, at the end, what we came out with was a product that was very lightweight, that used very little material, that was very sustainable in the way it's being manufactured, but also taking into account certain parts that are actually quite technologically advanced. For example, we have a joint here that holds kind of everything together that has been worked on a router, on a CNC router, which is three-dimensional the part. And again, that has been specifically made for this chair. Um, and so everything kind of holds together. So when I'm sitting in it, it feels like one object. It doesn't feel like different pieces stuck together. And that was very important for us from the beginning. And the beauty of it is, is that it has a level of transparency so that I can see through the actual material as well. So it's not just like it's a solid surface. I can actually see the floor that's behind me. Or if I'm in a space, I can see what's behind it as well, which is very important also for the light to be able to get through. Also to give it this level of lightness, not just by picking it up, but also just by looking at it that it has a level of lightness as well. The idea for the project came when I was on a trip in South America. Specifically, I was in Colombia at that time. And I noticed on the streets of Bogota, that, uh, in, which is the capital of Colombia, that there were many people that were fixing uh, cane chairs, so this material here. So, and uh, I was very interested in this fact because it's the kind of material that, I'll be honest, that you can find everywhere in the world. You can find it in Spain, you'll find it in Denmark, you'll find it in North America, South America, uh, China, Philippines, Indonesia, and actually originally the material and the technique comes from Indonesia, it's from, if I'm not mistaken, from around the 8th century. So it's been around for a very long time, and over time it's diffused around the world, and it's been used in many different ways. Here we see it, uh, basically it has been woven in a way which is very adaptable for furniture, but it can also be used for making baskets and traps and for very many various types of things. So I was very interested about this fact, you know, and I was, my curiosity, and like, I was very curious, let's say, to that it was used around the world, and it's the kind of material that everyone understands and everyone knows, um, from elderly people to young people, to material that you find absolutely everywhere. And for that reason, I was very interested to work with it, because it was, I felt like it was one of the few materials that was completely globalized uh, and that has been around for centuries and it's been used in various ways for centuries. The name for the actual product came from, uh, since it's called Colony, and the reason that it is called Colony is that um, in the 18th, 19th century, you would find many colonial homes, French colonies, Spanish, Spanish colonies, British colonies, and many times they would have this kind of furniture with this specific type of caning on it, either in their patios or indoors. And the reason for this is, is that what's wonderful about this material is that many of these colonies were in very hot climates. So in, a, in the southern hemisphere or very close to the, the equator. So places where that are quite warm. And what the beauty about caning is that since the uh, air can pass through, so it's not a solid ma material I was saying before, air can pass through. So overall, you don't get as hot, you won't sweat in the chair. There is a level of air moving through the, the, the product all the time. So for this reason, it was used quite a lot. And also because it was a light material and it was abundantly available since basically you're creating a material from a very natural source for certain types of grass as well. Um, and later on, this was exported uh, into Europe, it was brought into Europe in around the 19th century and used very much for, if we look at very historical types of pieces of furniture from the 19th century as well. The Colony Armchair has been quite successful since it was launched a couple of years ago with Miniforms. And this is thanks to Miniforms' ability to manufacture the product 
in a way that is designed in a contemporary way and not just with tradition. What's interesting with working with many forms is that they're very, very good at mixing tradition with contemporary um, manufacturing capabilities. So in the case of this armchair, we have something that is very has very traditional aspects of it with some certain parts that are very innovative. So working with many forms, uh, I can actually say that it really has worked out really well in this product. And, uh, and in fact, based upon this product, which was the first product that we designed for many forms, we went on to work with them many more times because we've been very happy with the collaboration as well.